Hello, my name is Zero, and welcome to Space Engineers. In this video, we're going to cover the basics on building ships within Space Engineers, and more specifically, the kind of ships you want to build when starting out. In this case, we're going to be building an atmospheric mining ship. Whilst this video is meant to be standalone, if at any point you don't understand something I'm saying or are confused, please check the description of this video for the link to a playlist or the eye in the top right to see other tutorial videos I've created. Building ships is very similar to building rovers, which we did in the last video, except that ships have thrusters. Space Engineers has three separate classes of thrusters. Atmospheric thrusters only work on planets and moons, but their thrust gets weaker the higher you go up. They consume power to operate and are cheaper resource rise than other thrusters, and are generally the type of thrusters you want to use at the start of the game. Ionic thrusters are the opposite to atmospheric thrusters as they're designed to work in space. They are less powerful than atmospheric thrusters, but that doesn't matter as much as you're in space, and require end game resources such as platinum which can only be found on moons and asteroids. Hydrogen thrusters work in both environments but don't consume power to operate and instead they use hydrogen like your jetpack does. They output considerably more thrust than the other two types of thrusters I've just mentioned, but come with the downside of having to store large amounts of hydrogen on your ship. We're going to be using atmospheric thrusters for the reasons I've just mentioned. It should be noted that atmospheric thrusters require metal grids to assemble, which means you'll need a source of cobalt ore, as cobalt cannot be refined from stone. If at any point you're unsure at which ores are needed for which blocks, there is a link in the description to a spreadsheet I'm creating which lists all of the blocks we have used so far, which components are needed for each block, and which ingots, and by extent ores, are needed as well. First block you need to build your ship is a landing gear. If by default it's trying to place a large grid landing gear, press R to switch to the small version, and then you can press B to align to gravity. And there you go, there's our landing gear, disabled it up. Unlike the rover we built last time, we won't be grinding down the landing gear, as we will need to use it to land and lock to surfaces. Now we need to build a quick frame to put all our other blocks on. And now that I've placed my frame down, I'm going to place a large cargo container. Notice the way I'm orientating the cargo container as I place it. I'm placing it with the three small connectors, uh, two on the either side and one at the front. This is going to be important, as we'll need to connect the drills up to this cargo container using these side ports and connect the cockpit up using this front port. For example, you can see there's two small connector ports on the back of the cockpit, and there's one here so I can connect that up, and I've also got the one here. When I place the drills in a second, they'll also have small ports on them to connect up. When I place the drills, they're going to need something at the back to place again, so I'm just going to place these blocks here temporarily. Yeah, my drills, place, and place, and then weld up. And you can see they've got the small connectors on the back and on the side. So I'm going to now need to use conveyors to connect them up to the cargo container and up to the cockpit. Got my small conveyor selected, and I can use the scroll wheel to switch between the different types of conveyors. For this, I'm going to need a tube just to go three blocks along. Then I want to use a corner to point inwards, so I can then connect up the cargo container and the cockpit with the conveyors here. Do the same on the other side. I place two tubes at the side here. Then finally, the small conveyor is all multi-sided, so it has an output on every side. And I'm going to place a second one on top, and then I'm going to use a curved one to connect to the cargo container. And then I'm going to use two more curved ones to connect to the cockpit. And now when we're mining with the drills, the contents of the drills will automatically get sucked through the conveyors into the cargo container if there's space. Also, don't forget to place a connector on your grid, so you can transfer items and energy between this grid and other grids. As with the rover we built last time, we're not going to have any power generation on this grid. Instead, we're going to use batteries to store energy. We will recharge the ship by docking to the main base, which generates renewable power and generates far more power than we'd be able to generate on this small grid. Now that the grid has power, you can also see that the conveyors have gone green to indicate they're connected. If they weren't connected, they'd be yellow, and if they were damaged, they'd go black. There's two different sizes of thrusters we can build. We can build large thrusters and small thrusters. Large thrusters are six times stronger than small thrusters. However, they take up nine times the amount of space and use four times the amount of iron, five times the amount of nickel, and eight times the amount of cobalt. If you check the spreadsheet, you can see the exact amount of resources each of them use, but as you can see, it doesn't use that much cobalt. So if you have the spare iron and nickel, and you're not worried about space, which you probably aren't. It's probably better for you to build large thrusters just to keep yourself in the air. It's important that you build thrusters in every direction to allow yourself to move in every direction, obviously. However, you need more thrusters in the directions that you're going to resist gravity. So because the drills are on the front of this thing, and we're generally going to be flying this way, we're going to need thrusters pointing downwards and resist gravity going up. We're also going to need thrusters pushing in the reverse of the drills, so that if we're pointing the end of the drills right down, we'll also have the thrust to get up. We'll also need enough thrust, not only to lift this ship as it is now, but we'll also need enough thrust to lift it while this cargo container is full. Now, obviously, we're not going to know how much that is at the moment. Once we finish the ship, rather than going straight and doing mining, we need to test that it has enough thrust if we fill the cargo container up to not fall immediately out of the sky. Keep in mind that thrusters uh, do damage to blocks nearby them, so this should be far enough away because this is one, two, three, four, five, six blocks away, which is, should be far enough for a small thruster. But just keep in mind that when you're building ships, you need to keep gaps where the exhausts of the thrusters are so that you don't end up burning holes in your own ship. As you can see, I've added two more drills to the front of the ship, so when we're mining, I can mine a hole large enough to fit the ship through so I don't have to keep manoeuvring the drills around to make the hole bigger. 
Gyroscopes are a lot more important on flying ships than they are on rovers. We had it on the rover to help us maneuver the rover while we we're driving, but on ships, dry aeroscopes actually give us all of our rotational power. Uh, you, we won't need that many. I think two will be enough. But just keep in mind, if you don't have any gyroscopes, you won't actually be able to turn the ship while you're flying it. It'll just sit in the same direction that you built it in. Unless you hit something, of course, and then it will go in whatever direction you smashed it to bits in. Because it's dark when you're mining underground, it might be a good idea to build some lights. Spotlights are probably the ones you want as they point in a single direction and you'll be able to see where you're going while you're mining and what ores you are mining as you're doing it. As on the rover, we're going to put an antenna and an ore detector on the grid, but we're also going to put a remote control block on the grid, which will let us remote control the ship at short distances and if we were to put a cockpit on the base using the antenna at the base, we could also control it at long distances. Also, if we're going to be remote controlling the grid, um, because we're not in the cockpit, we won't be able to see the ship, so we need to place a camera somewhere, which we're going to place here between the drills. Now there should be everything done on the ship. Before we do any configuring or anything, we need to actually make sure we can power it. So I've got a connector over there already. So I'm gonna quickly, on the battery power that you get by default when you build the batteries, try and fly it over to there. So I disabled the thrusters earlier, so I'm gonna turn those back on. I'm gonna set the batteries to auto. Uh, apparently we've got 19 hours of power. Oh, we got plenty of power, we got loads of time. Okay, so as you can see, space to go up and C to go down very slowly. Uh, I can move using the mouse and I can also use the arrow keys to move as well. And if you want to rotate, it's Q and E to rotate in the left and right directions. So I'm going to very slowly fly this over to where my connector is. And as we did the rover, I'm going to press P to park and connect to the base. I press K to go to the control panel. You can see, you see everything on the ship and you can also see everything attached to the main grid. Everything on the main grid will be in a different color. For example, this antenna number two here is the one on the rover and this antenna here is the one on the base. So they're in different colors to highlight they're on different grids. I've just disconnected it from the base so we can figure all the settings for the ship. So if you press K, you can get to the control panel and you can see everything on the ship. Type thrusters in your search bar. You press control A to select all of them. You can then create a new group. I'm going to mine zero minor thrusters. Press save. I'm going to hide them in the terminal just so they don't take up the list, but just so that they're, they're all there and they're just hidden. Now if I want to do I press G to go to the top hotbar editor and go to groups, zero minor thrusters, put it on number nine, and then I can turn my thrusters on enough by pressing nine. This would be more useful for when I'm charging the ship or if I want to conserve energy for any reason. I'm also going to group the batteries together so that I can set the batteries to recharge on a button on the hotbar. And I'm also going to set all the spotlights to be a group so I can turn them all off. So as you can see I've grouped together batteries, gyros and spotlights and thrusters so I can configure them all from my hotbar. One of the first things you probably want on your list is the connector and you want to select switch lock so you can Lock and unlock the connector from the hotbar. It's better to do this in pressing P because if you have multiple things like landing gear and connectors and all and other ships connected, if you're pressing P, you just it disconnects everything. For example, if you were carrying something on the landing gear for whatever reason, say you've crashed your ship and you want to pick it up, pressing P wouldn't just disconnect you from the main grid; it would also drop whatever you were carrying on the landing gear. You want to put the batteries on the hotbar and switch them to recharge on and off. So this switches them from auto to recharge. So you can see I've got zero power, and then I've got 22 hours. This will allow me when I'm docked to the base to allow me to make sure the ship is recharging rather than it sending power from the ship to the base, which is what we don't want. And I'm just going to put simple toggle on and off to my thrusters, my spotlights, and my gyros. Let's say for any reason your ship's stuck in the air and you've ran out of hydrogen. You press I, go to remote access. You can see that I've got a small grid 1255, which is that ship up there. I can then press control on that. And now, as you can see, when I move my mouse, I'm actually moving the ship. Press Q and E to rotate left and right. And if I press C, I can come down so I can drop the ship down. Let's say you, you wanted to actually see where the ship was as well. Press G to edit your toolbar like you would in any ship. You can find the camera we put on the list earlier. Drag it onto the hotbar and press view as the function. So now whenever you're in remote control, if you press one, you can now see from the camera. F to exit that view and then I can slowly bring the ship down and redock it to the land. There you go. Last thing to do is set up the drills. If you go to block tools, get drills and put it on number one. If you have one selected on your hotbar, you can use the right click or left click to use the drills like you would if it was in your hand. As you can see, using right click mines the stone in a rider area like when you use the right click on the drill and it doesn't give you any resources. I've docked the ship with the base so it can recharge and once it's done, I'll show you how to mine with the ship. Right, so we're fully charged. So what we need to do now, as you can see on the pot bar, I've set it in order. So five to put the batteries on auto, six to put the gyros on, seven to put the lights on, eight to put the thrusters on, and nine to disconnect. So I have a source of iron that already know exists over here. But what you can do is if you hold right click, like with your drill, it doesn't actually mine any stone. So we're going to hold right click and we're just going to push down and use the third person camera to uh, make sure I don't hit anything. And we're going to push very slowly down here until we get to the bottom and then we can start mining ore. I can see third person is your friend here. But also keep in mind that if you're using remote control that you can't see third person because you're not actually in the ship. As you can see, we're right in front of the ore now, so I'm going to use left click to actually mine the ore. So if I look in my cargo containers now, you can see I've got 5k iron ore and 500 stone. I think getting the stone is going to be inevitable just because of the nature of mining. So on the right hand side, you can see the weight of the ship. If the weight of the ship stops going up, that's a good indication that your cargo container is full. If I go to I, you can see that I filled up 7,000 litres of 46,000 litres. So we're way under being full. But I'm just keeping an eye in case I waste any ore by mining when I'm full. 
What I am going to do as I'm going out now, I'm going to use the right click to make the hole bigger as I leave, just so the next time I go down here, it'll be easier rather than pointing straight down. It should also be noted that the right click mines a much wider radius than the left click does. But as you're not getting any resources for it, I guess that's the trade off for it. There you go. Now all we need to do is redock it with the base. Uh, obviously, this will be more difficult because as the ship is heavy, you'll need more thrust to move around. You see, with this design, we're at about half the thruster's power. So this means we probably have enough thrust that when this is completely full, to go vertically and horizontally. So we don't need to worry too much about adding extra thrust. Just keep in mind that if I were to tilt to the side, you see that I suddenly go that way because I haven't got enough thrust on the side to actually go up. So if you wanted to make a ship that could go in every direction, you'd have to have equal thrust in every direction. But because I only need to face upwards or down, I only need extra thrust in that direction to keep me up and everything else is just for maneuvering. Now that I'm connected to the base, the ore from the ship should automatically get sucked out from the ship into the refinery, which I can hear going now. If I go to a refinery, you can see that there's now 19k, 20k, etc. iron in there, which will now be refined into ingots. Now that we have a mining ship, we can begin collecting all manners of resources in order to upgrade our base and build other ships. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to a spreadsheet that has information on all the ores you can get and their uses. I recommend at this point you should get a source of iron, nickel and cobalt ore, as they're the three most used ores at this point. Magnesium is only used for ammunition and silver is only used for medical and gravity components, which you rarely need anyway and definitely not at this point. The only other ore that might be worth gathering is gold, which is used to upgrade the refinery which we'll be covering in the next video. Finally, whilst not on ore, stockpiling ice might be a good idea, as it can be converted into hydrogen which will need to fuel any ships going to space. As we now have the ability to gather lots of resources, what's our next goal? As the upgraded refinery produces more ingots from refined ores. Upgrading these machines improves the speed of them and will make building ships in the future less of a grind. There's also a couple of machines we need to build before we can build our first ship that goes to space. 